I remember the first time I edited a video with Final Cut, I was so excited to start mixing and matching clips, adding effects and transitions, all these things that just seemed so cool at the time. But to get to that point, we need to add assets into Final Cut Pro, because that's just a crucial step. You can't build something if you don't have the building blocks in the app. So we need to create a library first. When you open Final Cut for the first time, a default library was created. So we can actually see that if we look up in the browser at the top left corner, we see this untitled item. And to the left of it, this little icon with four little stars is the representation of a library inside of Final Cut Pro. If you hover over it, you can see the little tooltip shows you where this untitled library, also called an untitled Final Cut Pro bundle, is stored. So what we're going to actually do is create a new library from scratch. We're going to close this library, and you can do that by right-clicking, or if you don't have a mouse, just control-click on the library and choose Close Library. You can also do this by selecting the library, going up to the File menu, and you'll see an option here that says Close Library. This one was named Untitled. So we're closing the untitled library. To create a new library, just go to File, New, and then over to Library. When you create a new library, it's similar to creating really any type of file. You're going to want to name this file and choose where it's saved. So I'm fine saving it in the Movies folder, but I do want to give it a name. And it's very important to name everything that you create inside of Final Cut and everywhere else. It helps keep you organized. So what we're going to actually be editing is a little short film called Overtime. And this footage came from a website, editstock.com. I would strongly recommend checking them out. If you need content to follow along, editstock provides you the raw content so that you can actually edit professionally made films and other types of media, you can actually get all of their raw assets to play with and to work with. If you don't have access to those assets, you can certainly follow along in this entire course using your own content, which I find is very valuable. A lot of people ask me for the same things that I'm editing with, which you'll be able to use using edit stock. But if you can use your own content, it just applies everything that you're learning to your actual projects and can be very valuable. But in this case, we're, we're using Overtime, so I'm going to call this library Overtime. Just the name of this entire project. And then I'll click Save. And what you'll notice is in the library sidebar, we can see the Overtime library has been created. With that library selected, you can go over to the right side to your inspector, and you'll see the library properties. I want to discuss a few of these properties, but you'll see we have the Overtime Library. It is a standard library that is saved onto Macintosh HD. The entire library, which makes sense, we haven't done anything to it yet, but the entire library does take up 181 kilobytes, which is extremely small. That's almost no space at all. So the Overtime Library is set to the standard color space. If you click on Modify, you can change this library to work in what's called Wide Gamut HDR. And that allows you to access a wider field for processing color. In this video, we're not going to take advantage of it, so I'm going to keep it as a standard library. But if you do have footage that was shot on cameras that have a much wider color space, than our, currently our standard cameras, this is where you can go to change that library into being wide gamut HDR and it'll take advantage of it. In this case, I'm just going to keep it as standard and say cancel. Below those initial properties, we can see the storage locations for our library. When you click on modify settings, you'll see the options for this. I recommend keeping everything at the default for now. But you can change the storage locations for any of these options, and then those items will be saved in a different location.
For now, we're storing media and the cache inside the library. Motion content gets saved in the motion templates folder. And backups are stored in a folder on your Mac called Final Cut Backups. And those are perfect for now, and I would recommend keeping them at that setting, especially while you're getting started. Below the storage locations, we see each of the options and what you can do with them. So for example, media may be stored in multiple different locations, but there's an option here to consolidate that media, which means it'll copy all of it into the storage location, which for media was set to in library, so it actually copy everything in. And these options are nothing that you have to change right now, but it's just a good idea to get an overview of what you have access to. So those are the library properties, and again, we got to them by selecting the library and using the inspector to see those properties. So that's a library, and it's kind of the top level. All of the media that we import, the projects that we edit, all of those are stored inside of this library. You can certainly create multiple libraries and have multiple libraries open, but for now, we're going to just work with this one overtime library.